Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. Wasn't that awesome? That was a military flyover today honoring healthcare workers in the New Orleans and Baton Rouge area. And we wanted to come over here today where we had plenty of big sky so we could see them and support all those healthcare workers who are helping get helping us get through this virus. Well, I know that was two B-52s and a couple F-15s it looked like. We've been to see the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds on both coasts. We'll drive anywhere for a flyover. We just love that yes, stuff. Yes, sir. So let's go get cracking on that farm sink. Hey gang, we're back at the house. In one of our other videos, we said, if there's only one thing you learned from this video is to make a mock-up, this is another one of those mock-ups. And this one's really important because this establishes the plumbing and everything for this farm sink. So what do we got here? So this cabinet manufacturer does not make a farm sink base. What they do make is this 18 by 24 deep by 36 inch wide upper cabinet. It's made to go above a refrigerator. And in fact, we have another one of these that's gonna go above our refrigerator. So all we did, we made a tow kit for it. So see how it lines up right here? Yeah. And we'll show you a little more detail of this when we flip this over. Then we cut two pieces of plywood, three quarter inch plywood right here. And we're basically going to build a spacer to get the farm sink at the right height. So one of these is going to be the bottom of our spacer and the other one's going to be the top of our spacer. We did it this way because three quarter inch plywood is not really three quarter inch. And that way we don't have to account for that, um, that difference. So let's come up here. We've got a, here's our sub top mock up and here's a piece of stone. So the stone is actually going to project over the edge of the sink. So we want the farm sink to come up this distance right here. Now this is fired in a kiln and it is not straight or flat. It's just the nature of the product. So I'm going to take a measurement. So I'm like one and three eighths right there from the top of the sink, right? To sure. the bottom of the stone. Let's check the back. All right. I'm one and a quarter fat. Okay. So why don't we just go one and a quarter for our spacer? Sure. And the other thing you notice is that the, the farm sink is projecting out this way. It's actually overhanging this face of this cabinet by three inches. So when we're done, the countertop is going to look about just like that. This will project three inches beyond the face of the cabinet and about an inch and a half beyond the face of the, of the uh, counter. So let's go outside and cut those strips. Hey, we're back outside. You can see we cut our strips and this is actually our second attempt. We cut them at inch and a quarter, brought everything in there and we were just a little too low. So we were now at uh, almost inch and three eighths and it's right where we want it. So we're gonna screw this together and we'll take you back inside and show you the whole thing. All right, we've got our wooden sandwich, our wooden spacer, whatever you wanna call it, back inside on the sink base. We've got front marked on it. And the reason we did that is because we just screwed this together, but this edge and this edge need to be square to that. So we just used our combination square like that. Once they were square, we screwed it together. They need to be square because that's going to be where we fasten um, a piece of this skin. Cabinet man manufacturer gives you quarter inch panel just for something like this and then we'll use a pin nailer and nail it to here just like that yep so that's flush and this will be at the bottom of the sink and it'll look perfect and we'll even do that on the sides so let's throw the sink on here and just check it one more time to be sure it's where we want it all right there's our sink Imagine this is the subtop on a cabinet adjacent to the sink, and there's our stone counter. It's going to project out over the edge of the sink, and the, the uh, countertop installers will put a bead of silicone right here, and when they put that down, that'll all be sealed. Great. Nailed it. Yep. And the other beauty about this is we're not going to attach this sink to this base. This weighs 80 pounds. It's not going anywhere. In the event that this ever breaks, you could literally get in here with a knife, cut that silicone, drop the disposal, 
and this whole thing will slide out from under the cat from under the counter and you could actually replace it hmm yeah that's good so, thinking yep so just like that <laughs> so let's take this back off of here one last time and we're going to show you the next step all right obviously we need we need a drain this won't work right here and this thing's going to have a garbage disposal so we're going to have to cut a big hole through each layer of plywood and through the top of the sink base this represents the back edge of our sink we don't want it to go further back because we need room for the plumbing and then you also need room for the big weight that is on the sprayer hose if this was back here that weight would hang up on that. I'm sure everybody's experienced that somewhere. And there's no, no reason structurally for this to go back. The sides of this are gonna be plenty strong enough to hold that up. So this is the back of our sink. It projects 20 inches this way. Remember there's our three inch overhang right there. So 10 inches is the middle of our drain. So let me get this out of our way. And I've also marked it here. Here's the back edge of our sink. This is the center line of the cabinet. And there's the center of our drain. So in addition to cutting the two holes in here, like I said, we have to cut this as well, big enough to get the disposal in there. And we're gonna cut on this line and remove this section for all our plumbing. And we're gonna remove the back to account, to accommodate our drain uh hot and cold water and two plugs so let's bring all this outside and get set up out there okay we're back outside on what we think is the brightest day of the year the sun is brutal today yeah my pupils are non-existent yeah, i can see them we laid out an eight inch square and we're going to move this part to make room for our disposal it may seem like a large cutout but you need that room to get in there and tighten the flange Go back and look at our disposal video and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. So I've got the Festool set up with the, uh, the track. I've removed the riving knife. I, knew the, I know the new ones, the riving knife retracts automatically, but this is what we got. So here we go. Do that three more times. Yep, seven more times. Yep. Nice. There we go. And we love using this just because of the control, but if you don't have a track saw, regular circular saw, jig saw, even a reciprocating saw would all work. You just got to get through there. All right, this is done. Let's go transfer this mark to the top of our sink base behind you, and we'll start cutting that one up. We're using the off cut from the spacer as our template for this. So there's the center of our drain. We just went four inches each direction. So now let's cut that out. We cut this with our track saw, acting like a bridge. So we're gonna call it a bridge saw now. Patent pending. <laughs> but didn't go quite all the way through. Oh, we're good there. So I'm just gonna finish off these two with the buzz saw with a new blade, mind you. Cast in some of my Amazon stock to buy these. Noise. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. All right. Sweet. So our next step, we're gonna cut this section out for the plumbing. And I think we'll just use the same technique. That worked yeah. pretty, pretty slick. Yep. Step is to cut the back. All right, here's our all our access holes, disposal, plumbing, plumbing and electrical. I know they're big, but don't cut yourself short. You don't want to have to trim this 
after it's in. Let me tip this up and I'll show you the toe pick I made. Just plywood. Screwed and glued together. And then right here, I was kind of playing around with my new saw stop. I actually made a rabbit here. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, so that all the weight of the side is bearing on this plywood. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yep. I was just messing around. <laughs> so let's go bring that inside. We'll put the sink on it, hang the disposal, attach the drain, and we'll measure the drain distance from the floor, and that'll tell us how far we have to move our existing drain. Hey guys, it is not a couple hours later and we did not make two trips to Home Depot to get this straight. So here's what happened. We've done farm sinks before. And because of this thickness here, the normal, normal meaning the ones that come with garbage disposals, this bracket does not allow enough room to accommodate the thickness of the sink and still put the disposal brackets on there. So they make a deep flange set. Trim to the trade, I guess is this brand name. You can see the model number. And it's the same thing, it's just taller. And it accommodates the thickness of a stone sink. And these come in white, we've put in white ones. It looks really nice, it just disappears. So we came prepared, but look. It will not go down. And I think it's because of the way that they're made. Yeah. It's, the unevenness. They must not have these wherever they make yeah. this thing. And we, we're not going to force it by any means. So we took a chance that this one, the Insincurator brand, would fit. And give us enough room to put the collars on the bottom. So as you can see, it's going in. So I'm going to put putty here and use the clamping collar to draw this down. That way we don't have to take it apart again once we get it in there. So let's do that. All right, that did not work. We even put a block on here and tapped it down, but we could not get this ring on here. That's how it goes sometimes. Yep. Yeah, so Jordan's advice is to send it on this one. I'm not a send it kind of guy, but let's see what happens. Come on. Uh, <laughs> no way, dude. You don't think so? No. All right, gang, we had a little curveball there at the end. We could not get that fitting to go in the sink. So I'm going to go home to my meditation hot tub and we're going to figure it out. And we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to get that thing in there. So we'll see you then. Hey gang, it's a couple days later. I went home, I thought about the sink, and I decided to buy a diamond tool from a master car to make that opening bigger. It won't be here till tomorrow, so make sure you stay tuned and we'll show you how we attempt mm -hmm. to make that hole bigger. But in the meantime, we have stuff we can do. So I assembled this cabinet that goes over the refrigerator. Yeah. And then this, if you recognize this from our crown video, I just used that, that crown jig as a ledge. And then I marked my two studs that are behind here and my horizontal blocking. I put an X here because our water line for the ice maker is behind the blocking. I don't want to take a chance of putting a screw there. And then uh, I have this, it's a Stanley Yankee drill a 03-043. I've had this thing a long time. It's got bit storage in the handle. It's great for drilling a quick pilot hole piece of wood like that. But I use the smallest bit uh, to find edges of studs. So watch this. And you see how it stopped? It stopped about a half an inch down, so it hit a stud. Now I already know that that's the edge of the stud. And watch what it does. See how it just bottoms out? And that helps me find edges of studs. If you don't have that magnet or something else, this, this is a good tool to keep in your toolbox. So I think we're ready. Right. This strip here, you may have seen, uh, we'll talk about that after 
it's hung up. Well, why don't I hold it, Jordan? I got your screws and everything right Sweet. here. All right, gang, we got this cabin installed with five screws into our studs and our blocking. It's super strong. But before we move on to the next step, we want to show you a little detail right here. If you go back and look at our island cabin installation, you'll see how we talked about this lip right here. And that's a quarter inch lip to allow the cabinet makers to put in this dado. So our refrigerator needs 36 inches of clearance width. And that's exactly the width of this cabinet, and that's what we have. But if we would have attached this cabinet to this one on this panel, we would have lost a quarter inch. And then this door probably would have bound up on this cabinet. So you have to put a spacer in. Minimum quarter inch, but I went more. I went half an inch because we had the room this way. And if you've ever had to like shoehorn a refrigerator in, you'll know what I'm talking about. So that's all done. We've got this side panel made up. This came from the cabinet company. They gave us the panel and this strip has a dado in it. We used our clips and glue in the back right here. And then this is attached to this cabinet with two th screws through the style. So our next step is to secure this at the bottom. So we're gonna use our level, get it plumb, and then we're simply gonna use one of the clips from the manufacturer, and we're gonna fasten this into some anchors through the tile into the concrete. Now, I know I've said a couple of times never to put anything on top of tile, so this would be the exception. It looks much cleaner this way and then if anybody ever wants to re replace this tile, they can easily remove it from underneath this. So that's our plan. Let's get this thing attached to the floor. We're using these green masonry anchors right here. We used these in the previous video, right? Or what do we use these in? We used them in the pocket door video. That's right. We also used them here, I believe. All right, we have our side panel in. Now, typically, you'll have a side panel on each side just for symmetry. But we knew when we ordered cabinets how tight we were to this window and we didn't have room for it. So we omitted it on purpose. And you can see right here, we'll, we'll have to trim the casing just to get it in there. Yep. And then if you notice right here, we did have to cut this horn on the sill. So this is your window sill. This is called a horn. And, and we had to trim that. Uh, and so now what happens is we've established this reveal between the cabinet and the window. Remember over here on the sink, we put these up, got this reveal, and it's duplicated over here. Same thing on this side. All in the name of symmetry. Right. So now we can take this cabinet, move it to the left so that this and this match and then we start building all these cabinets. And then what happens down here, we're gonna use the drawer. Remember this cabinet? This is our microwave drawer. We took the rail out. Right. We're gonna use one of the drawers that came with this. And we're gonna custom build a window seat with that drawer in it. Yep. So that's gonna look really cool. Yeah, so stay, stay tuned, tuned for that video. Yep. So we're gonna throw you into a time lapse. Well, hold on, before we go into that, why don't you show them how we secured this? Oh yeah. So we just use the clips that came with the cabinets. Uh, we got this one down here on the tile. This one screwed into those anchors in the, in the tile. And then this is screwed into the king stud on the left-hand side of the window. Right, because this thing was super flimsy and uh, it was just kind of flopping around because yep. it is thin and was yep. only being supported by this dado, but now it's screwed into a stud. So. Right, and we wanted it in case somebody was sitting on the window seat like reading a book. It was nice and solid. Right. And it is. It is solid and it's straight. Yep. And this is perfectly flush here. Yep. So we're ready to go. So we're gonna, well, what do we have to do first? Well, we have to move all this away from the wall. 
and this is sitting on tile, so we have to cut more tile. Sweet. Yep. <laughs> so let's get it done. All right. All right. In one of our previous videos, we established this chalk line all the way around the kitchen dining area with our laser. We want these cabinets to be on the same horizontal plane as these. So what I did, I came in here, I'm gonna take my tape measure. Now I'm hooked on the top of this one. I'm gonna measure down to this line, 55 and an eighth. Now let's go over to that other cabinet. I've actually already done this. I've made a line 55 and an eighth. So when we set this one, this line will be on this chalk line. That way these two are the same. So when you're standing back here, the crown all lines up to look nice. Now from the bottom to that mark, they're 34 and three quarter. Our chalk line is just over 35 and 3 eighths. So if we cut a 5 eighths inch block, that's the difference between 34 and 3 quarter. And that one is just under this line. We'll, we'll be good. Put that cabinet on these blocks and we'll fine tune it with some shims. So let's go cut some 5 eighths inch blocks. All right, we have all the dining room cabinets set in place. We've been waiting a long time for that. It went together really well. We we're screwing the styles together right here. We had a little bit of a problem on this one. We could never get this flush. So we just went through the plywood right here. And that worked great. We, we ripped a spacer and then these screws are pretty thin. So we just snapped them off. And that worked great right there. Yeah, it's flush. Uh, this is ready for sub top and we'll build these nine drawers and then we're ready for granite or our countertops and then over here we've got our lonely farm sink waiting so this the tool we need will be here tomorrow and we'll finish this all right guys that's going to be a wrap for this video if you liked it be sure to hit that like button for us hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber and stay tuned for the next one where I've decided to take a diamond grinder to our $400 sink, all in the name of plumbing. Stay tuned. Thanks.